Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce the Cartesian coordinate system. Let me get my document camera. Here we go. So the Cartesian coordinate system is closely related to the number line. If you remember from when you were a child, you saw probably, at least we did when I was a child, the number line as a way to visually represent numbers. And the number line literally was just a line. And you'd select some point on this line to be zero. And then you'd count upwards. Each tick up the line would be an integer. Each tick down the line would be a negative integer. And if you wanted to visually represent a number, say 1.5, you could do so on the number line. The number line is of somewhat limited use, though because it is so basic, it just lets you represent a single number. Very frequently in the real world, we want to represent pairs of numbers. So say you're looking at a falling object. And you get the, you're looking at its velocity, and you come up with the following data points. After one second, the object is falling with a velocity of negative three meters per second. And maybe another data point after three seconds, the object is falling with a velocity of negative seven meters per second. And that's to start with, let's just look at this first data point. So you have two numbers here. You've got the one, and you've got the negative three. And you could plot to these numbers on the number line. But in so doing, you've lost the relationship between this one and this negative three. These numbers are related. I mean, you see the relationship here. This is a time. This is a velocity at that time. And if you look at this, you don't see that relationship. So the Cartesian plane is a way of storing data visually, when instead of having a single number, 
you have two related numbers. So we look at now both of these data points and we think a little and I mean, I've been giving it away by using the phrase data points. It occurs to us that we could store this information as ordered pairs, time, comma, the velocity. So this first piece of data would be stored like this, one comma negative three. And this second piece of data could be stored like this, three comma negative seven. So what we need to store this data is a way of storing ordered pairs of numbers. And the way we do this is attributed to a French mathematician, René Descartes. I'm probably mispronouncing that a little but he had the brainstorm that you could take two number lines and put them together at a right angle. And in particular, we put the number lines together so that the zeros intersect each other. So here's the first number line. It's got a zero on it. I mean, zero's a number. It's on any number line. And in particular, zero is here, where these number lines intersect. And likewise, this second number line is situated so that its zero occurs at the point of intersection. And the way we store data on this number line, let me, where here is what I'm looking for. One of these number lines will represent time, and the other number line will represent velocity. And now we have this point we want to visually represent. And one of the coordinates is time. And the other coordinate is velocity. So we see a one in the time position. So we go over and we find one on the time number line. And we see a negative three in the velocity position. So we find negative three on the velocity number line. And here is the point one comma negative three. For three comma negative seven,
here's three on the time number line. Here's negative seven on the velocity number line. And here's three comma negative seven. So in general, these number lines are given names. Um, sometimes we name them like we just did. If one represents time or the other represents velocity, we might just name them after what they represent. But in general, we call the horizontal number line the x-axis. and the vertical number line, the y-axis. And data is always stored as the coordinate on the x-axis, comma, the coordinate of the y-axis. So if you see something, say, 2, comma, 5, that two is always going to be the horizontal distance. And the five is always going to be the vertical distance. Nail down a few definitions. The point where the number lines intersect is zero comma zero. And it's called the origin. It has its own name. These number lines shot space in the plane into four pieces. One piece, two piece, three piece, four piece. I don't know, I, my grammar somehow deteriorated while I was talking. The first piece we call quadrant one. These four pieces are called the quadrants. We start here and then for whatever reason, it's not what we're used to doing in most situations, but we number counterclockwise. These quadrants are really for trigonometry. We're not going to do a huge amount with them, but it's important that you know what they are, and especially it's important that you know what the first quadrant is. Because the first quadrant is the quadrant where x and y are both the positive. And in a lot of real world situations, x and y do have to be a positive. So we're going to be spending a lot of this class in the first quadrant. I think that's probably enough for now. We'll maybe talk a little more about graphing in a separate video.
work. But that's what, did, what have we accomplished in this video. We've defined the Cartesian plane. We've seen how data points are plotted on the Cartesian plane. We've defined the origin and we've defined the quadrants.